Hey, aloha and welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. I'm the host, Andrew Lanning of Security Matters Hawaii, and today we're talking with Bo Monday. Bo, thanks for coming in. Yeah, my pleasure. I know pleasure. you're a busy guy, man. No. We all are. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to get into a little bit of school security for you today. Bo is a CISSP. Um, he drives an information group out here in Hawaii, and um, he's seen some of the issues with trying to tie security to the IT department. Um, I, I've personally run a lot of projects that aren't aren't integrated well where i've got facilities who hasn't done projects with it yeah. or i've got security groups that haven't done work with it and today security is really it driven or it ought to be so thanks for coming in today sure my pleasure, um, my pleasure. i put out a little thing earlier about you know um s school security is this truly heart str heart string tugging yeah problem in our country right yeah. we've, we've seen a lot of tragedy and i i don't know of a way to prevent that tragedy but um, culture is a big component of security awareness, um, teaching kids, you know, what to look for in, in maybe their friends who are having problems or struggling. Um, and Hawaii's culture is a big thing on a lot of our campuses right. here in a, in, a, in a broad, different way. I think we're a lot more acceptance out here, kind mm -hmm. of a piece of our culture. We want to be open. Open campuses are much harder to secure. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, um, what, for what you've seen on the campuses, is that a... You know, it's it's a good thing to have as a component of culture, but from a IT perspective, what do you think about it? You know, from security there. Yeah, I've been in Hawaii for about ten years, um, off and on, uh, and I've had a lot of experience on the mainland, and I see schools on the mainland, and and in Hawaii, they they really are part of the community. They're kind mm -hmm. of a bedrock of the community. They're you know a, a cornerstone. So it's really um, it's really hard. You know, yeah, people uh, need to be allowed to come on the campus and you know, interact with the with the faculty and the and the school in ways that that they wouldn't normally allow on the mainland. So it, mm -hmm. it presents a, a different challenge. You know, unfortunately, we see and as we do these, you know, after action reviews on these on these school shootings, there's always signs. You know, they look through the children's social media history, and you know, that always you know seems to be teachers saying, "Yeah, you know, we we thought that kid was going to mm -hmm. be trouble." So. It really is, you know, looking at the how the the children interact with each other online and and also um, mm -hmm. on the campus as well. Usually, there's there's indications and there's opportunities, quite frankly, for for us to correct and to save these kids, yeah. uh, you know, from from either starting trouble or being involved in something. So. I completely agree. You know, we we I've had always had this sort of thing that you know we we make them go to school. It's I guess you can homeschool, but by and large, there's a law. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we're going to make you go somewhere, it seems like we need to secure you there because you're really not there of your own volition. You right. know? Um, the same way employers are required to protect employees mm -hmm. at, at a job site, for example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this, this idea of, of, of these kids being there and, and then us, you know, do you, do you think there's a... I don't know if I want to use the word fear, but I've been seeing a lot of stuff about active shooter training with kids in schools. And, and to me, as a security guy, I can't start them too young in, in the awareness right. component of that. Do you, do you, cause you have been on some K through 12 and mm -hmm. do you see that in the younger kids? Are they, are they afraid or would they rather interact or what's, what's your take on that? I, I don't get the sense that they're, that they're afraid. I, yeah. I do see, you know, we do drills pretty regularly sure. um, at the school that I'm at. Um, and it just becomes, you know, this thing that you do. It's like preparing for earthquakes or a tsunami or anything else. It's just, you know, one of those, um, you know, contingencies that you prepare for and hope that it never comes. Sure. And uh, I, I feel like the kids have kind of take it in that in that vein. I don't think they're, um, you know, walking around, you know, looking around every corner and waiting for it to happen to them. So I think we do a good job of kind of setting the expectation that, you know, this this could happen, but it's an extremely rare event. You know, even today, even though we see it a lot in the news, it's it's really a, a very, um, you know, rare event. Sure. And we focus our education, you know, we, we touch on active shooter type scenarios, but, you know, the, the more damaging, I think, on a day-to-day -day basis are things like um, cyberbullying. Yeah, bullying. And things I, like you know, that. Sure. Yeah. And these, these bullies, right, there's a great... There's a great indicator of someone who's kind of got a behavioral issue that we, we need to address it early in their life right, right. rather than having these grown-up bullies. Wasn't there a, I think there was an incident on a, it was a public school campus, the, the, the players, the, the children, the child's 
parent like was fighting with the coach or assaulted the coach or something. So here's a parent who's possibly not modeling the best of behaviors <laughs> in the home. And so you wonder you know, about that kind of an impact. Do the kids, um, do, they, do they model for each other? Do they, do they call each other out? Do they have pads of reporting? How, how do you go about that awareness campaign? There's a lot of that. And I, I say, you know, we've, we monitor the kids to the extent that we can, but mm -hmm. a lot of them have private phones sure. and their own, you know, personal accounts. You know, there's, the joke is that there's, you know, the Instagram account that, that the parents know about, and then there's the other Instagram that they don't know about. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's a lot of, of kind of hidden uh, social media going on. I but, uh, you know, by and large, kids are concerned if one of their peers is doing something that they, mm. that they think is harming another child. So awesome. uh, it, we, we get a lot of, of, ch of kids reporting things to us and, mm. and giving us an opportunity to step in or to, to bring the parents in and, and help us address that situation. Have like so. a counseling session, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Um, interesting that you brought up about how they, they'll run the dual account. So the, the kids <laughs> are often better at all the social media uh, than yeah. their parents. Yeah. Uh, I did some of the classes with the state last year where we had that uh, safe, safe and secure week. I forget what the, the moniker is, but you know we had it. We did it on the libraries, and a lot of the parents brought their kids in. The kids were far more adept <laughs> in cyber and knew what malware was and, and knew what phishing was than the parents. I was yeah, really amazed. Absolutely. So maybe we need to reverse the learning and have the the kids go home and do some homework with their parents and then bring yeah. back the results. <laughs> you know, it's interesting. We see uh, at our school, and I've seen this on the mainland as well, we we see kids kind of start being curious um, on cyber probably in the seventh or eighth grade. So ah. it's much earlier than, than most people think. Um, and so they start exploring. You know, at, at our school, we, we give... We're giving laptops to kids, you know, in middle school, and so now they have wow, the ability. Is that fourth grade or it's sixth grade? Sixth grade, yeah. okay. Wow. So now kids have the ability to install programs and to run things, mm -hmm. and the you know the rules, you know, kind of let up a little bit. So it's it's easy for us to to identify um, kids that might have uh, you know some interest in in entering the cybersecurity field, and we have opportunities to to mentor and coach. Yeah, it's good. I, I know uh, my wife uh, did the robotics. Um, mm -hmm. She's a judge for the competition. Yeah. She said, these are the most brilliant kids you've ever met, you know? And I was like, wow. So, and the Hawaii teams are really strong there. So, I think, yeah. does your school have a, a team? Yeah, we yeah, had a awesome. team. They just got back from the mainland. I think they took second place. Awesome. So, See, yeah. isn't it something? So, yeah, it's fantastic. So, we shouldn't stop teaching. We, re we shouldn't have fear. So, this, um, this social media component, um, do you... Do you think, because we, we teach about the predators, how the predators watch when they'll post, I'm so mad at my mom, mm -hmm. or whatever it yeah. may be. And do you think there's an awareness of those kids that there, that there are these types of predators that pay attention to those things they say? Or is it, you know, more, more that they're just posting to get a reaction from their friends or their parents? Or I something? think it's more the latter. I think they're, mm. they're looking to get a reaction. I think, you know, as you look at, at when we were kids, you know, we, we had a small you know, group that we could probably count on both hands of close friends and people that were influencers for us, right? Sure. And now today, they're, with the internet and social media, kids are being influenced by thousands mm. of people mm. that they have some level of relationship with. Maybe it's just they're following them on Instagram or something. So there's a lot of, you know, positive and negative influences mm -hmm. coming at kids now. And I think that's kind of driving a lot of the frustration. Um, do you guys teach them about like misinformation, disinformation campaigns? And I don't, if they're not voters yet, I don't know if anybody's really <laughs> going after them, but uh, I do, I, I keep them aware of all that kind of stuff. So I don't know, is that happening, you think, with the kids as well? Yeah, we do touch on, you know, cyber hygiene, mm -hmm. and that's, that's part of it is, you know, looking out for things that are just not true. Mm -hmm. And that's been, you know, a larger part of the conversation, I think, lately in mm -hmm. the last couple of years, is there's been a lot of focus on, you know, fake news and, and misdirection. and and things being planted, you know, on, on news sites and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. So there is a growing awareness that a lot of the stuff that you see on the Internet is just not true. Yeah. Or, it's, or it's intended <laughs> to make you angry, right? Sure. It, which, is, which is detrimental to a child, right? If, if people are posting inflammatory things just to make uh, this, you know, a child upset, you mm -hmm. know, and trigger them into doing something, that's mm -hmm. terrible. Or trigger them to stay home from school. Sure. Um, Used to just when I was a kid, it was just the fire alarm threat. Somebody, somebody <laughs> so everybody got out of school for an hour until they uh -huh. figured out what happened. Uh -huh. um, and then now they've got there's like bomb threats. I see I've seen some instances of kids calling in bomb threats, yeah. uh, these swatting threats, calling in the police, reporting something that's not true. Right. Uh, happening. Yeah. Um, 
So we, we, we touched a little bit on Hawaii being a much more open type of campus. Does the awareness that you're working on with the kids extend out into the community to their parents? It used to be like PTA when I was a kid. I don't know how that's done these days. Yeah, we have some communication through our, our parent faculty association. Okay. Uh, we have a, a parent newsletter that goes out regularly and we oh. try to slip some things in there. So we try to, to keep, you know, the parents up to speed on, on things that their kids might be, you know, uh, facing when they're uh, online. So that's definitely part of our, of our program. You know, we only have, you know, the kids for a few hours a day. There's, sure. there's a lot of other influences in their life, sure. right? So, um, you know, it's part of it is teaching the, the kids how to behave and, and what kinds of things they're gonna uh, face, you know, while they're at school and then, you know, what they're gonna face when they're away from school and, what, and how their parents can, you know, help protect them. Yeah, I wonder if they're, uh, they might be better at communicating than we are. Like, the, you know, they're, they're the, the far. So do you, do you guys monitor feeds like on campus that are from the campus community itself for, you know, incidents, fighting, something's going to happen or something? Or is there a, to the do you extent, have a capacity to do that? I don't know. Yeah, to the extent that we can. But, yeah. uh, you know, the kids are very clever and, and they know <laughs> how to get around things. And, sure. you know, it's kind of whack-a-mole sometimes. You know, we're always, you know, kind of chasing down weird VPNs and proxies and things that, oh. the, that the kids are using. Oh, so, they're going like on tour. Yeah, they're, they're, oh. they've got, you know, covert channels set up that we're constantly oh. knocking down. So, it's, oh, so I guess you have K through 12, so you do have some more advanced users. And again, and, starting, and influencers. At, <laughs> starting at 7th and 8th grade, they, they ah. start getting very curious and they start, wow. you know, uh, playing a bit with the computers and, and seeing what they can what they can do. So. Wow. So you, oh, I see. so you got a little more work going on. So uh, how's that headache for monitoring a network like that? That's, I mean, I guess you got some, some IDS, IPS going on, but you know, what's your, what's your, what keeps you up at night? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that the unfortunate truth is that, you know, we can't stop everything sure. and, and kids are going to find ways to communicate that we're not going to be able to listen to. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we can only take technology so far, and the rest is talking to the kids and educating them and making sure that they're aware of the impact of the things that they say. You know, it's really a, uh, an education kind of approach because we're just not going to, we're not going to find every covert channel that the kids might be using. So it's really about educating them and, and their peers on how to recognize when somebody that they're friends with is doing something inappropriate. Is doing something wrong. Yeah, yeah, it's so important. I, I, I wish we had more funding and, and more time to teach that awareness stuff. And I know it's trickling down. You know, we were working on the adults who we still need to keep working on. Mm -hmm. But if we can get that broad base of, of knowledge with the kids where they're questioning each other, questioning their friends, they're going to grow up questioning. Yeah. I was reading that the like German students are like brilliant. Like you, you can't fish them, you can't fool them because <laughs> they start them so young, yeah, teach them about what's bad out there. Mm -hmm. Um, and is so uh, the programs you've been around are they do they have some legacy? Is it like five years old, ten years old, or has this been a last few years type of thing? Well, I've always been a strong proponent of of education and security awareness education. So I've been in this business for twenty plus years. Um, so I've that's always been kind of a focus of mine. But the tools have gotten better. You know, now we have the ability to send you know phishing exercises to our to our you know constituents so sure. right we can say this is you know here's a phishing email that you might get based on something that we have gotten in the past mm -hmm. you know and and challenge them to respond to it the right way and if they don't if they click on it then they'll get some education little training and, right a little training right um, there's videos now there there are several companies putting out cybersecurity focused videos mm -hmm. uh, particularly content that's consumable for children. Mm -hmm. So awesome. I think that's great. I think the, the recognition over the last couple of years is that kids are ready earlier in their education for cybersecurity training. Mm -hmm. And not just, you know, here's what to look out for, but, you know, here's, here's some things that we do in the cyber community that you might want to do as a profession, like mm -hmm. as, you, as you grow through your educational career. Awesome. Yeah. So we're with Bone Monday. We're going to take a break and pay some bills. We'll be back in one minute. Aloha. I'm Cynthia Sinclair. And I'm Tim Apicella. We are hosts here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com 
and make a donation to support us now. Thanks, Thanks so much. So much. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Gwen Harris, the host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of the supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Aloha, I'm well, welcome. We're back at Security Matters Hawaii. Uh, we're with Ball Monday today, and we've been kicking around that, that social media influence, teaching kids, creating awareness. Um, the kids aren't the only problem. We got this adult user problem. You have perhaps faculty you've encountered, you have mm -hmm. facility folks, you have security folks, you have a lot of different stakeholders. I'll, be, I'll use, be, try to be gentle here sure, with my, sure. with my yeah, terms. That's a good um, term. So those stakeholders need training and help. How, um, how have you seen models that, that work? Let's talk about that. Yeah, I think there's a growing awareness, just like a, a, at the, the children level, right? There's a growing awareness, uh, just people in their daily lives, how big of a threat cybersecurity mm. you know, threats can be. So I, I think there's a growing awareness. And you know, we're, uh, when I was at Hawaiian Tell many years ago, I, we were doing weekly articles, monthly articles wow. in, the, in the newspaper. So I think uh, doing that kind of stuff, just putting things out in the community, uh, not necessarily targeting any particular user group, because I think that you know, adults of all fashion uh, get approached in some way or another, whether it's a skimmer on a gas pump Phone, or fax, or oh, it's all <laughs> email. I mean, there's there's a hundred ways to scam somebody yeah, out of their some... money. So challenge. Yeah, everybody's trying to take your money, you know, regardless of what you think. There's a lot yeah. of bad people. There's a lot of people, you know, think, well, I just own a small business, you know, nobody's, you know, the hackers aren't going to, the Russians aren't coming after me, right? But people don't realize that it's just one big ocean, you know, the internet is, and, you know, the people don't care what kind of fish they catch mm -hmm. in their net, right? So. Yeah, I was wondering, so th do you allow your users to, they, do they work at home, take their equipment home as well and come back? And they can. So they can be... Picking up stuff there that they bring to your environment, that, sure. so you're protecting. Uh, see, that gives you a larger threat uh, landscape there. Sure. You, you got to work on. Yeah. So one of the delicate lines that we have to that we have to dance on is is enabling the business to to be effective and efficient, uh -huh. and you know, but also protect them. So, so there's always some kind of give and take. Like you wish that. You could just, you know, collect all the computers at the end of the day and put them in a locked safe, you know, so that they don't get stolen or lost or, or put on a dirty network at a coffee shop. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we have to, you know, educate our, our folks and, and how to, you know, operate that computer safely, put some controls on there like antivirus and advanced malware and, and you know, just, you know, hope, hope they do the best. You know, trust but verify sure. is one of my favorite mottos. Sure. Are the in the campus environment that's there now? So, are your physical security teams integrated to the IT? I mean, are they on the network with their cameras or their access control? And is that a is that a, a component of of security consideration overall? That that is um, you know got got a programmatic you know program driving it. You know, it's interesting. Over the last couple of years, there's much more convergence between the physical and the cybersecurity okay. uh, groups. Uh, it used to be, you know, a walled garden. The, the physical security folks would be off <laughs> doing their thing. I grew up and, in that world. <laughs> yeah. And then the cybersecurity folks would be off doing their thing. But I think the, the, there's been a lot of recognition over the last few years that there's a lot of, um, I want to say, mutual benefit, right, for these sure. teams to be working together. And I, I think not just the physical and cybersecurity folks working together, but Cybersecurity has a lot to offer into helping other groups within most organizations yeah. work better and more efficiently. You know, things that may not have been advisable five years ago are now things that we could properly secure and let the business do if they if they wanted to do that. So there's a lot of business enablement that can happen. There you go. Uh, with security, if you know, protecting these things that maybe are are not a wise thing to do without any controls, but you can do them safely if you wrap the right controls around there. Yeah, and, and also the tiering, right? I see, you know, a lot of people, I think, think security is this 100% Fort Knox prison <laughs> or not. Yeah. And, you know, really, you know, we preach the 
valuable assets need the most security, mm -hmm. and you can w ramp into that. Um, I know that the National System Contractor Association and SIA, some of the larger industry groups, yeah. have a program called PASS, the Partner Alliance for Safer Schools, and it's a, a four-tiered system that's kind of rolled out across the country and ha has seen quite a bit of success. And it's got mm -hmm. a, it's more physical and electronic security, but the IT pieces, as you get closer to tier three and four, is tying all that together operationally. Right, right. and yeah. when you look at the NIST uh, cybersecurity framework, which I helped develop you know, many years ago now. Oh, awesome. Gosh, they're on like their third revision now, yeah. but that's a similar thing. You know, there's tiers of maturity uh, that you can attain, and it may not make sense. And in fact, it probably doesn't make sense for you to become the highest maturity across all the tiers, right? It sure. doesn't necessarily make sense for your business. And it probably is more uh, cost than what would make sense for the, sure. the type of data that you're protecting. So there's always that balance. Um, and one of my favorite sayings is, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, right? You just want to you want to. That's how I like that. You want to apply the appropriate level of controls and mm -hmm. nothing more uh, to make sure that that data is safe. Yeah, we do find that the even even in land access controls are really good examples. A group at an organization will bring it in, and the first guy who doesn't want to have his car to open the door is the big boss yeah. who doesn't want to be inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. And and cybersecurity works the same way with controls and authenticate. I'm, I'm going to have to tell you that. Yeah. So people all of a sudden can't move or can't get to something or, you know, we're, we're controlling it for a reason. And that, um, that I, I walk into a lot of organizations that that reason hasn't been very well defined yet. The, right. the level of risk that's acceptable for an asset or, or whatever it may be. Um, what's the sort of successful processes you've seen around that, that risk guidance or risk yeah. development. It seems to be missing in a lot of places from I hate, my perspective. Yeah, I hate saying no to stuff. I mean, <laughs> I, you know, cybersecurity has the reputation of being the, the ministry of no or the place where <laughs> ideas go to die, you know, depending the on... The ministry of no. Right, right. so I hate saying no. I, my preference, my approach is, you know, tell me what you want to accomplish. Let's figure out how to get to yes on, oh. on solving your business problem. And maybe it requires an extra hoop for them to go to, but at the end of the day, you know, they're going to be able to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish. And, and it is about educating them, you know, this is why you have to jump through this extra hoop is because if we don't, you know, there's this level of residual risk on that data that you're responsible for, mm -hmm. you know, and sure. if we just, you know, apply this extra little thing, you'll still be able to do what you want to do and the data is safe and the connection is safe. So, I spend a lot of time, and this is where my education kind of focus has, has really, uh, you know, uh, brought a lot of value to, to my approach is that I can kind of walk them through my decision making process. And it's more of a partnership and a give and take than mm. it is, you know, me coming down and saying, no, we're not going to. Nice. I hate doing that. So it's more of an, of an InfoSec approach. Right. It's a so, risk, risk based sure. approach. You know, um, trying to figure out how we can get to yes on what they're trying to accomplish. Because mm -hmm. that's, at the end of the day, my job as a cybersecurity professional is to enable the business to do what they need to do. Securely. Securely. <laughs> Securely as can. Exactly. Yeah, like when you give the guy the, the UB key and he's got, yeah. the, you know, the 64 <laughs> passphrase thing, right. you know, they go, ah, but when you show them how you can manage it and why it's necessary to manage it that way. Right. I think that the lights come on. And ultimately, like you said, they just want to get to um, their goal of, of usage or usability or whatever it may be. Right, so, right. Very good. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, we didn't get to introduce your history. So give, give us a little bit about your background. I didn't, uh, sorry, I usually start with that. I, uh, I got right. right into the topic. <laughs> that's right. Uh, I've been in IT for a little over 30 years. I've got a degree in accounting, which I've never oh, used. Wow. Uh, uh, I went to work for a, a CPA and decided I didn't like that, so I redirected to IT. And then when 9-11 happened, I kind of ah. took, took uh, account of, of my history and said, what can I do to, to make the world a safer place? And so I quit the job I was at and retrained myself as a cybersecurity professional. And uh, that was, gosh, almost... 17 years? Yeah, 18 years 18 ago? 18 years ago. September, yeah, we're getting there. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while now. So... Um, like I said, I've been on. I've been in Hawaii for, for almost ten years, on and off. Uh, I spent a couple of years lately uh, running a hospital system on the mainland. Oh, awesome! Uh, but I'm glad to be back. My family's all here. I got grandkids here, so awesome. this is my home. Right on. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, I'm glad you're here working in the community. We need that expertise. There's been a lot of 
Brain drain, you hear about it from Hawaii. I was with the yeah. Hacker High School kids at uh, yep. Mililani the other day, mm -hmm. uh, trying to convince them to, to stay here. There's good work here, there's good training. And hey, learn here, train here, go away, but come back. You know, Bring some of what you learn out there. That hospital environment you were in, very difficult environment to work in. It is. A lot yeah. of regulatory guidance there. Right, and uh, you know that's an area where if a doctor wants to do something and he feels like he needs to, to do it to save somebody's life, mm. we have to figure out how to make that, how mm -hmm. to allow that to happen, right? So it's a very, uh, very tense, you know, situation sometimes where you have to kind of think on your feet. Yeah. But, you know, we talk about the, the brain drain, and that's not just in Hawaii. We feel it, I think, a lot more here in, in Hawaii. But the, I think that there's something like 2 million open cybersecurity positions in the nation right now. Yeah. Uh, and I think that the work that the Hacker High School and some of the other organizations are doing is really great because I think up until the last couple of years, we've kind of targeted uh, – college kids as yeah. they're coming out of college. Sure. And we're seeing, you know, being in an education environment, we're seeing kids in seventh and eighth grade getting excited about cybersecurity. And I think, you know, reaching, out, reaching them in college is too late. Yeah. We need to be in the middle schools and we need to be in high schools. So I'm really excited to see Hacker High School. We did a, a variant of the Hacker High School program, uh, oh, awesome. a three-day um, session for our uh, high school kids uh, back hey, in, in January. And we're gonna, That's with Bob Monroe? Right. Awesome. So we're looking great. at, at doing some, some stuff earlier in 7th and 8th grade. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot, not a lot of curriculum out for that level right now. Yeah. So it's kind of a chicken and egg thing right now. And the now. kids are so smart. So we got a little less than a minute, maybe a final word of advice, and then I'll close us out. I think, uh, you know, just be careful what you're clicking on. And, and you know, wherever you, you can, take the opportunity to teach somebody about the threats that they might face and how they can operate. Uh, their computer safe. I love that. One of my monikers is always be learning, always be sharing. Thanks, everybody. Aloha.